Hi everybody, as I promised you in my last video, this video is about image segmentation and I'm going to show you how to do this or that. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Johannes Frey or just simply call me Joe. I've been working as a software engineer for more than 10 years now. I'm self-employed, I'm running my own company doing data science and DevOps stuff because at some point in time, you also want to deploy your super awesome machine learning model into production. All right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform segmentation on videos and images. First, I will say a few words about the data set and the algorithm that I'll show you in this video. And as soon as you've got some more context, we will do some nice little code walkthrough. So there will be code in this video. Just bear with me for a moment to set the context. And most of all, you will be able to reproduce the result and maybe adapt the principles shown in this video for your task at hand so that you can use it for your own projects. And as I said, there will be an URL to the code for this tutorial at the end of the video. So hang in with me and yeah, let's start with some explanation about the data set. We are starting with the most important part of data science, which is the data. So now we will be talking about what data set we will be using throughout this tutorial. We will use the MS Coco data set. MS Coco is an abbreviation and stands for Microsoft Common Objects in Context. And this is a well-known data set in research and academia and is used for object detection and image segmentation. This, this data set is used also for benchmarking the most recent state-of-the-art algorithms. This data set consists of about 125,000 images with 80 target classes. And if you download it on your local machine, then it will take up about 37 or so gigabytes of disk space. So now that we have talked about the data set that we are going to use, let's talk about the model. So we will use mask RCNN as our deep learning model for segmentation. This is a very state-of-the-art deep learning model and therefore it's quite complex and we won't be able to go into much detail about the specifics of that model because yeah it would just yeah it, it would need an own video to explain what's going on there because it's super complex but if you're interested let me know in the comments if enough people want to see it then i might also do a deep dive about the specifics of that model but i really want to give you some context and say a few words about mask rcnn so mask rcnn is built upon faster rcnn which is a state-of-the-art model for object detection and what it basically does is it adds another output for a segmentation mask which is computed in parallel which makes it quite fast and actually not much slower than the faster rcnn which it is built on and what also makes this model so complex is that inside of this model, there is a ResNet 101 used, which is a convolutional neural network with 101 layers. So it's a super deep neural network. And yeah, so that shows the complexity of what's going on there. So, but now we also have this model clear. We will use a pre-trained model, which was trained on the MS Coco dataset. Since training a model from scratch on the MS Coco dataset, would take about two days with an eight GPU machine. So I didn't try it. So that information was on the um, official documentation and I kind of believe them, I guess. Uh, yeah, so because even though we will use a pre-trained model, we will also adapt it to our needs. And for that, we will still need to train at least some layers. And I trained those layers on my workstation, which is that one. This workstation has an AMD Threadripper 1950X CPU, which is a 16 core CPU, and also has two 1080 Ti's for training deep learning models. So it's a quite powerful machine. And even with that machine training one epoch of this tutorial takes about one to two minutes. So imagine doing the whole training. Yeah, I kind of believe that it would take forever. In my last video about selecting the right model for your current task, 
I talked about pre-trained models and that it is possible to use and adapt them. And in this video, I'll show you how to do it. But now you're asking, okay, but what are we going to adapt? Okay, let's see. So we will use a pre-trained model, which was pre-trained on the MS Coco dataset. And as I said earlier, the MS Coco dataset has 80 target classes, which means it is able to detect and segment 80 different objects like people, cars, and so on. But what we are going to do is we will only, or we want only to segment people. So we don't care about all the other objects. Okay. One way to achieve this result would be to just leave the model as it is and detect everything, but then in the output only highlight the people and don't highlight the other objects. But in this case, the model would still search for all the other objects and it would be slower and it will cost more performance. So what we are going to do is we will take this pre-trained model, then we will drop the weights of the final layers, which are yeah, there for classifying those 80 different classes. And we will retrain them to only classify people. And how this is done? Yeah, so you are asking how this is done? Yes, I'll show you now. Okay, now let's have some look at the code. All right, when you open the project, you will see two directories. One of those is called people segmentation. The other one is called mask RCNN. In the mask RCNN folder, there is basically the whole mask RCNN model, which was downloaded from GitHub from some company that made it available. I will also put a link into the description below for that. But I also removed some of the samples and yeah, some of the stuff to make it more concise. So what can you see in this directory? When you open the mask RCNN folder, you will see the MRCNN folder, logs, images, and yeah, this is some project stuff that is, that is neglectable. So you can also just remove those two. Probably they won't even be there as soon as I upload it to GitHub. All right, so in the MRCNN folder, there is the whole implementation of the model. And just to give you an idea how complex this model is, I'll just open the file and show it to you. So when we open the model pi, you already see that there is a lot going on here. And if we scroll down, you'll see that that file is about 3000 lines long. Yeah, so you see it, it's 2800 something something. So a very complex model. And yeah, I hope you understand that it would take forever to go through all of that. So we just assume that that stuff works and it does what it needs to do. Then there are some other f uh, files which are configs, utils and visualize stuff. Okay, we won't care for them that much now, but maybe we'll come back later to that, let's see. The logs folder, this is the folder where per default your trained models are stored. So as you see, I've trained quite some models for testing purposes and so on, and they are all stored here with uh, some timestamp. Yeah, basically that's it. There's also the requirements, um, txt and the setup config and so on, so that you are provided the packages that you need to install for all of that to work. But now let's dive into the code that actually performs what we want to do. Also a quick shout out, the examples and the code provided with the mask RCN and implementation are excellent and well worth a look. But also at first sight, they're quite overwhelming because there's a lot of stuff going on. For example, there are also examples how to train um, this model on ImageNet, not only on MS Coco. And yeah, there's quite a lot going on there. So what I tried is, I tried to make this tutorial as concise and as understandable as possible and only focus on the parts that really matter for our current task at hand. 
and I will put a link to the Mask RCNN repository in the description. So as I said, it's worth checking it out as well. So all right, with that being said, now let's go and have another look at the code. Let's start with the helpers py file. So first of all, there are the imports that are just needed and then there are just a few helper methods and I'm not really going into much detail about them. So there is a method to get the colors that are used for the segmentation masks. Also here is the method that actually puts the mask onto the image with does some validation with this 05 controls the opacity of the mask. All right, then there is a helper method for saving the image. What this does is basically it gets some it gets some path to the to the source image from the source image. Then it will call the detect function, which will try to detect the people in this image. And, and with the results from that, it's calling this get image with mask that we have seen above, which puts the segmentation mask on top of the image. And then it just saves it back to some other file. Then there is this method save video. Yeah, as the name suggests, what is it doing? Well, it's saving the video. Um, yeah, so first of all, we generate some video object. And then what we are basically doing is that we are stepping through the image frame by frame and, do it, and using the method that we saw before for the image task. So for each frame in the video, we will we will detect the people, then we will put the segmentation mask there, and then we will just buffer the stuff, and at the end we will save the video. So this is done in this loop. So for every frame we get the image, we, um, use, we call the detect function to detect the objects, then we put the mask there, and then, yeah, we write that and in the end we save it <coughs> to the file. <coughs> but now, now the crucial part comes. So the mask RCNN algorithm requires a config and a data set. And the config basically um, tells, or, or the config gives some yeah, configuration properties, right? So here we can give a name to our config or to the model that we're trying to train. We put the number of G GPUs and the number of classes that we, are want, that we want to predict. So in our case, we want to predict one class because we are only interested in people. And also uh, we need to add another for the background that is always there. Yeah, then we say for how many epochs we want to, uh, so how many steps are in one epoch during the training process. And we want to uh, give it a minimum uh, confidence for the detection. So how confident needs the algorithm to be before saying, okay, that one is a person in our case. So it, there are a lot more parameters that you can use so as you see, that is inherited by config, which on the other hand is in the mask RCNN folder, in the MRCNN folder, and then there's this config, and here you can see all the possible parameters that you can put in there. All right, so with that being said, now, the data set. Okay, that one will now be a bit more on the complex side, but most of the stuff is some special stuff that is needed for the MS Coco data set. All right, so first of all, there is this method defined, which as the name suggests, try to load the MS Coco data set. <coughs> you, can, you can provide an auto download parameter which makes it 
download the MS Coco dataset from the internet. So if you put true for this parameter, it will download the 37 gigabytes of data set onto your local hard drive. And then it basically tries to load all the stuff from the from the MS Coco data set. And yeah, what is to point out is that you can that you can uh, provide the class IDs. And this is how I actually did the limitation to the person class because I know that the person class has the class ID 1 and so when loading the Coco dataset for training and for validation and for everything I always provide class IDs with 1 and so uh, what this does is here when it's adding the classes and when it's adding the images to the actual dataset that is used to train and uh, to train the model and do other stuff um, it only loops through images that are actually in this class ID. So it only adds images with people on them. And this makes it possible to detect only people. Yeah, so the next method is the auto download method. And um, yeah, that is basically only for downloading the whole data set and so on. So yeah, we can just skip that. There are some URLs and some downloading, unzipping and blah, blah. Okay, the load mask method is actually a method that you would need to implement on your own if you would use this model for another data set that is not MS Coco. So that needs to be implemented to provide the masks and the class IDs um, as seen here so so that is basically what you need to customize when you try to use it on an on an own data set so you need to provide the masks and the class ids and how you do it this is up to the data set that you're currently using so that is for sure a method that you need to customize when using other data sets image reference is also another method that you could customize but it's not that really important yeah and here are basically two other methods which are basically just helper methods for the load mask method that we saw earlier and as i said that implementation is specific to the ms coco data set it is specific to how the images are provided and how the annotations for the images are provided. So what, but what you need to watch out for is, so if you are gonna use it for your own data set, you will have to provide your own configuration with your own parameters and you will need to provide your own data set with your own uh, load mask method which is yeah with your own load mask method that in <clears throat> and also when loading the uh, when loading the images you should use this add image and add class methods to actually load the images and the classes all right so this is the groundwork but how does this program run so that's happening in the AppPy class. Again, some imports that yeah, are just needed. Then we use ArcParse for some nice command line interface. And yeah, so this program has two modes in which you can operate it. So the first mode is the training mode. So, which means you start this program and as a command, you say train then you need to provide the data set that you're using for training so in this case the location to where you downloaded the MS Coco data set or in case that you want to auto download it you put the location to where to download this data set to then you can specify the logs uh, parameter to give a custom directory to which the trained models are saved <coughs> and 
as said, the download flag. So if you set the download flag to true, then this uh, will try to download the NS Coco dataset to your local machine. And then that is those two last arguments are needed for the other mode, which is the basically not training mode or inference mode, in which should try to use the algorithm. So the other mode, the inference mode, here you would put not train, but inference or evaluate or anything else, just not train. Um, the, then you put the data set folder. Um, yeah, the year, yeah, I always use the year 2014 as a default. So that makes the whole model use the 2014 MS Coco data set. Yeah, and then you basically provide um, as, a, um, as a parameter image or video and then a path to the file that you want to process and where to detect the people. Yeah, so if it's training, then we use the people config that you saw earlier in the helper. And if it's not trained, then we will use an inference config, which uh, inherits from the people config, but <coughs> changes a few of the parameters. So in the inference mode, we only use one GPU. And because, I mean, we could also use two GPUs, but then we would need to change some code on the detection side and I want to keep it simple. So for now we we'll just use one GPU for um, yeah for inference and that works. Alright, so now now comes the part where we are adapting the pre-trained model. So as you guys see we use the mask RCNN in the training mode providing our configuration and the directory to where to put the models to. Then we, look, then we um, define the um, path to the pre-trained model with already the pre-trained weights in it. And here we say, okay, we want to load those pre-trained weights, which were trained on the MS Coco dataset, but then we want to drop the weights for those layers, which are the final layers, which uh, say, okay, we want to detect 80 classes, but we don't want to detect 80 classes. We just want to detect one class or like two, if you also count the background. So we, and that does not mean that the layers are deleted. It's just that the weights that were trained on the MS Coco dataset are dropped for that, for those layers, because we are going to train them by ourselves. Okay, then we get the data set and we load the MS Coco data set. Um, this, is some speci this is something special for the MS Coco data set that you can find in the documentation. Actually, it doesn't matter so far. then it's the validation data set is loaded. So the only difference here is basically that, um, yeah, here it's saying train, here it's saying validation, right? Then also we put some um, augmentation. Oh yeah, and before I forget it, here you see that we are using class ID one, which means people. So we are only interested in images and um, yeah, in the class ID one, which which uh, means people, so we only process those. And yeah, so basically after that we say, okay, we want to tr now to train the model, but as you see, there is this parameter which says, okay, we want to train the model, but we want to freeze all other layers, and we only want to train the head layers which are the ones that we excluded above. And what this ma makes is that the final layers that are there for classifying and detecting the correct objects are now trained to detect only the object that we are interested in that we provided here, which is people. And basically after that, 
that's it. With that we have a trained model. As I said, if you want to, to do this, you should really use a, a GPU, because on CPU it will take quite some time. Yeah, and here is basically what's happening in the non-training mode. So, which means in the inference mode. Again, we load the mask RCNN model, but this time in the inference mode. Then for as a model, we use the last one. So the last model that we trained is used. We load the, uh, we load the weights of that model. And then depending of, uh, and then depending on whether we provided an image or a video, we call the save image or save video methods, which then will process the images or the video, save it to our local hard drive with a specific name, which is people underscore and then some timestamp. So that's basically it. You can run this on command line and you can segment people with that. And also you have seen now how to change an already pre-trained model and make it fit to your need. So if you're not interested in 80 classes, if you may be interested in like five or one or I don't know how many, then you can just grab this adapt it to your needs and it will do the job just fine. All right, I hope that you liked what I've shown you so far and that you're now eager to try some of those things by yourself. So you can grab the code here and yeah, just grab it, download it, try get it running and yeah, have fun with it. If you like this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are informed as soon as new awesome content is available on that channel. Alright guys, see you the next time.